Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. We have some huge breaking news coming out of Ukraine. The strategic city of Bakhmud has officially fallen. It's been captured completely by the Wagner paramilitary group. That's part of the Russian forces, the overall Russian alliance. They're the tip of the spear, as it were, of Russian forces. The capture has been confirmed by Prigozhin, the head of Wagner, and confirmed as well by President Vladimir Putin. And there are wider reports that Ukrainian troops are retreating en masse away from the city. Now, this is huge. This is massive. Bakhmud was probably the single most contested region or town in the whole of the Ukrainian conflict thus far. The conflict lasted 224 days, nine months. And during that time, Zelensky spent a massive amount of military resources to hold the city, including a lot of Ukrainian soldiers, uh, but alas, to no avail. Uh, Prigozhin has outlined how Wagner is now in a position to remain in the city and fortify defense lines, rebuild infrastructure, and establish a solid base for the arrival of the Russian army, which is expected to be redeployed to the area shortly. Now, interestingly, Prigozhin noted as well that the fall of Bakhmut occurred exactly one year after the fall of Mariupol. So Russian forces clearly see a pattern here, and it's a pattern of victory. Though from a Western vantage point, it's a very slow, methodical, patient victory in contrast to the U.S. military's reliance on shock and awe tactics. Remember, Russians aren't particularly interested in shock and awe. They don't think it works. And of course, they point to Afghanistan as the model par excellence of that kind of failure, that strategy. They prefer the Clausewitzian model of a long, protracted grind that slowly but surely completely depletes and devastates and destroys the entire military structure of the enemy combatant. And that's exactly what we've been seeing the Russians doing in Ukraine with the fall of Bakhmut being the latest exemplar and that long protracted grind that is indeed annihilating the Ukrainian army. So what does this capture of Bakhmut mean for the Ukrainian conflict going forward? Well, first, Bakhmut is an extremely strategic city, geographically speaking. So now having captured the city, Russian forces gain the strategic advantage of freedom to maneuver. They now have the ability to move westwards, having broken through the lines of Ukrainian resistance and expand their conquered territory throughout this region. They're already beginning, as I understand, to make two moves on two key areas in the region. Even now, they're descending on the city of Ivaniske as well as the town of Kromove. And if you look at the map, you could see a cauldron forming around the area where the Russian forces to the north and to the south are forming like a gaping jaw that's ready to close in on the whole of the area. So that's the first and most obvious implication of the capture. Now, Russia will be able to continue to consolidate more and more territory going forward. The second implication is that Ukrainian forces are going to have to do something here. If there's no major counteroffensive in the next few weeks. I don't know how much of a Ukraine is going to be left. So there's got to be a counteroffensive coming. I know weather is interrupted or interfered with the launch of the planned counteroffensive, but in the end, I really don't know what it's going to be able to do other than further deplete Ukraine's expending resources. Again, the Russians' aim in all of this is to ultimately wear down Ukrainian forces, to just literally grind them down inevitably into oblivion. And it really looks like no matter what NATO forces do to prop up Ukrainian forces, that goal, that strategy appears to be working uh, for Russia. And Finally, I think the major implication, the third implication of all this, is I think the fall of Bakhmut proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that the legacy media, together with the military-industrial complex, have been out and out lying to us this entire time about Ukraine. If this doesn't convince you, I, I don't think anything else will. Right? All we've been hearing, I mean, I even did a quick Google search today on Bakhmut. The legacy media refuses to acknowledge reality. They absolutely refuse to acknowledge the fact that the Ukrainians are getting crushed. They will not acknowledge that. 
The Ukrainians are getting crushed. Russia is winning. And NATO is engaged in an absolute fool's errand and deliberately provoking and escalating this conflict. It's Vietnam all over again. Everything's going great, folks. Everything's great. Counter-offensive coming. Zelensky, what a hero, using those hundreds of billions of dollars perfectly, righteously, and wisely. And if you think any other way than that, you're just an agent of Putin. I mean, it's really just so sad. But having said that, slowly but surely, more and more Western commentators are admitting that Ukraine is not going to win this war. Perhaps it was the leaked Pentagon documents that appeared online a few weeks back that confirmed that Ukrainian casualties far outnumbered Russian casualties, basically seven to one, absolutely unsustainable casualty ratio disparity. I don't know what the catalyst was, but more and more pundits recognize that Russian forces are going to decide this war. Russia is going to make the decision when this ends and how it ends. And there's very little that Zelensky or NATO can do about that. Again, ironically, that was admitted months back at a congressional hearing where a Pentagon spokesperson admitted that. Um, as far as the Russians were concerned, they admitted they were achieving all their objectives in Ukraine. This was according to U.S. intelligence sources. U.S. intelligence sources confirmed from what they gathered, that Russia, uh, far from the way they're being depicted by U.S. media or British media, British is the worst with the pro-NATO propaganda, but far from all that nonsense they're pushing, Russia is achieving all of its goals. And there's nothing Ukraine or NATO can do about it apart from escalating this to a nuclear Armageddon. So, of course, we'll keep an eye on how things develop from here on end. But with the legacy media so dedicated to narrative rather than news... This is why we need independent content creators now more than ever. As always, gang, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on trans influencers imploding all as Bud Light collapses. You're not going to want to miss that. So make sure to click on that link and I'll see you over there. God bless.